Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cat team. Today we are going to continue our tutorial on the Mechanim. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, and if you want more Unity 5 tutorials, remember to subscribe to our channel. So on the last video we created a second state, as you guys can actually see here, we created a second state for our animator which was based on three different animations um, that allowed us to create the walk forward state. So today we are actually going to create the transitions between the two states we already have, the idle and the walk forward, and script those transitions to work with the player's input. So the first thing we need to do is, on the animator view where I am right now, create two variables. So, in order to create variables, here I'm going to uh, create, no, sorry, not layer, I'm going to delete this, uh, parameters, and I'm going to create a new, a new parameter, a new variable, and we will be, as you can see, we have several types, we have float, int, bool, or trigger, I want it to be a float, and I want to call it speed. Okay, so we have our speed right here. Now I'm actually going to create another, I'm going to create another float, this time direction. Alright, so we have speed and we have direction. Next, what I'm actually going to do is to create a transition between, between idle and walking. So I do this, by, let me move to here, I do this by actually right clicking over idle, select make transition and drop the, the line or the arrow over the, the final state which is walk forward, so I click it and as you guys can see we now have a, an arrow pointing from idle to walk forward which represents a transition between the two animations. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do now is to actually click on the arrow that represents the animations and as you guys can see here on the inspector we now have the transition here represented. Okay, so with the arrow selected what I'm actually going to do is to create a condition for this transition to happen. Now, as you guys can see here we have a list of conditions that need to be fulfilled in order to this transition to occur. Right now our list is empty, so what we want is to click on the plus sign and this will add one variable that you created earlier, one of these here, and with this variable we can actually set the condition we want. So in this particular case we want transition to happen when speed, so I'm going to select speed, is greater than 0 0.1 which means that the character will be walking forward okay so next thing we actually need to do as you guys can see we have this has asic time parameter here we actually have to disable this field right so we have to do this because if we leave this on, the animation will transition to another after a few seconds. And we don't want that to happen, we only want to have the, tra the animation transitions occur when you actually have the condi condition. So, while the condition is this one, will it always be um, walk, uh, walking forward, right? So, in this case, we, we take off the has AZ time. Okay, so now I'm going to repeat the process and create a new transition. Okay, this time from walk forward to idle. So I right click with the mouse, make transition, drop it over idle, and I'm going to select again the transition. Once again, we turn this off and we actually search for a variable which is speed but this time our condition is going to be different, we want it to be less than 0 
Okay, so this will make the transition between walk forward to idle, right? Okay, so we are done with the speed now, so let's work with the direction. So next thing I'm going to do is to double click on walk forward. And on the inspector, I'm actually going to change the parameter to direction. So if you guys see here, we actually have this one blend by default. I actually going to change this for direction. And we are actually going to use direction here. And now we can actually delete the blend because we are not going to use it. Okay, so we are going to use direction. Again, let's move on to the base layer. So our work with the animator is done. So now it's time to create some scripting. So I'm going to create a new C, C, C sharp script uh, right here. Create C sharp script. And I'm going to call it player controller. All right, next I'm going back to my scene. I'm going to select my default avatar. As you guys can see, I have the animator here. I'm going to drag the script over to my, my avatar, okay? And now I'm going to double click on the script and add some code to it. So let's wait a little bit while Visual Studio opens. And as you guys will see, this is actually a very simple script. That's all on. It's actually giving us an error here. Let me just. Okay, it's still loading, so we can act, can't actually um, do anything. But it actually, is giving us an error here. Not sure why, but we are going to check that in a minute. And Visual Studio is actually thinking a little bit to open. Don't know actually why usually is faster than this okay so now it's open okay so before um, anything else let's let's start with the script and we'll see the take care of the error later on okay so the first thing we are need to do is to have a reference to our animator right so for this I'm going to create a new variable which will be private animator uh, and let's call it an M so this is a reference to the animator right now we're also going to need two float variables one for speed and one for direction so private float let's call it player direction and private float player speed so we are actually going to use these two variables to store the values that we'll receive from the player's input okay so on the start method now we actually need to initialize the anime variable so you want it to be a reference to the character animator so in order to do that we actually do the following so we say anim equals and we say get component so we are going to get the component from the current game object where this script is so the script will be on the character so we'll get the this type we'll get the component of the type we are going to say from the current object so we want animator which is in the current game object so we say get component and we get want animator right so we want animator and oops sorry about that okay and this way we get the reference from the animator so let me just let the reference from the animator 
alright? So moving on, this time for the update, we want to take care of the user input first. So our character, the idea here is our character will change the states according to the input, right? So in order to do this, we need to store the values from the horizontal axis and the vertical axis on direction and on speed variables that we created earlier, right? So to do this, I'm going to let's just comment this so get user input and now what I'm actually going to do is to say player direction equals to input dot get axis and we want the direction to be to be specified by the horizontal axis so horizontal right and we want the player speed which is here to be equal to the input get axis this time we want it to be vertical oh, I have okay we want it to be vertical so this way we get the the user input and finally what we want to do next is to give these values to the animator variables variables that you created earlier uh, so our character changes the animation state accordingly to the player's input so to do this we actually do the following we say an n which is our animator we are going to set float because our variable is a type float and we want to set the direction right to be the player direction to have the same value so we are actually saying that the direction we define it of the animator will have the value that is stored on player direction variable okay and we want animation set float this time we want it to be uh, speed and we want it to be equal to the player speed which is right here okay so let's save it and let's back go back to unity and error seems to be gone which is good and let's press play and see what happens Okay, so as you guys can see, our character is in idle. So if I press the front arrow, our character will actually move forward. And if I press the, the side arrow, it will change direction. As you guys can see. So everything seems to be working just fine. And every time I stop, it returns to the to the idol. Okay. So this is a very simple example of how to use Mechanim to animate a character in Unity. In games, you usually have more than two animation states, like we have on this example. But the idea is always the same. So you create a state for the animation you want. You set the variables for the conditions that allow the animations to change and you create the animations and you script them so very it's, it's it's always the same process so you can re replicate this to whatever you want so i hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson and learned something new until next video and have a nice day